what is real-time PCR? Well, as the name suggests, it's a molecular biology technique based on PCR. It's performed in a specialised instrument, which is typically carried out in 96 well format. Excuse me, I had to move something. Uh, DNA amplification is monitored during the PCR reaction, i.e. in real time and not at the end of the PCR reaction, as is the case with conventional uh, PCR. And since real-time PCR can be used quantitatively, it's often referred to as quantitative or qPCR. And in fact, uh, when you get into the details, you will realize that there are very many abbreviations uh, within real-time PCR, and there are also very many different descriptions for the types of real-time PCR experiments which you can find. And I have found this very useful resource, which I would recommend looking at for anyone who is interested in, publica in the publication of real-time PCR data. It's called the Minimum Information for the Publication of Quantitative Real-Time PCR Experiments. And this uh, resource provides some really useful guidelines on all the abbreviations that you are likely to meet along the way. And this really helps to uh, standardize the way people carry out and report qPCR experiments, making it easy for all of us who use them. So just a quick look at a real-time PCR setup in brief. So a real-time PCR experiment is not all that different from a conventional PCR experiment. You start off with your sample, which is either your RNA or your DNA, which you want to amplify from. You, perform, you uh, generate a PCR master mix, which will contain pretty much the same components as a standard PCR reaction, your primers, your polymerase, your PCR buffer, and so on. The major difference between the setup of a PCR master mix for conventional PCR versus real-time PCR is the fact that a real-time PCR has a fluorescent label, and this is really the essence of the real-time PCR reaction. This fluorescent label is added to the PCR mix prior to the reaction starting. A light source, which is present in the real-time PCR instrument, excites this fluorescence within the labeling system, and as amplification of your target proceeds, a camera is able to capture this fluorescent signal after every cycle, i.e. in real time. And a graph will be plotted along the way by the software, which will give you the cycle number versus the fluorescence. And on the right here, I have a typical, ex a typical setup for a gene expression analysis experiment, but I would like to leave that until later, where I can talk about uh, the setup of a real-time experiment in more detail. The typical output of a real-time PCR experiment is a real-time PCR amplification curve. And as I mentioned previously, a real-time PCR experiment is carried out in a 96-well plate. So if you have all wells in use on the plate, you will actually get 96 curves. So you get a curve for every single reaction. For simplicity, I will just show you one, and I will just take you through the type of phases that you can expect to see as a real-time PCR reaction progresses. So on the x-axis, we have the cycle number. Now, a typical real-time PCR reaction is carried out over 40 cycles. On the y-axis, we have the fluorescence units, which are increasing. And then I have a threshold in here. Now, the threshold you can consider to be the background uh, threshold level. So at this point, you would expect to see some background fluorescence, even in the absence of a true amplicon. And this threshold is something which can actually be set automatically on your, on your instrument via your software, or you can manually control it yourself. Underneath the threshold, we have what I call a baseline or a negative control. So if you have a control with no template, you should not expect to see any fluorescence. So this should always appear below the threshold. And then we have the real-time PCR curve itself. And as you can see, it's an exponential type of a curve where we start out in the initiation phase. So PCR reaction has started. All the components are in abundance, but the number of amplicons which are present do not emit enough fluorescence for it to reach above the threshold level. So we don't really do, we don't do any detection in the initiation phase. At some point, the number of PCR amplicons present increases exponentially. And at that point, we are said to be in the exponential phase. And when this happens, the amount of fluorescence that is detected by the uh, instrument will rise above the threshold level. And at the cycle number where this happens, we say we have the cycle threshold. And I will come back to cycle threshold in more detail in the next slide. So during the exponential phase, all PCR components are present in abundance. And in an ideal situation, the number of amplicons is increasing by two at each cycle. So in other words, you have a true doubling effect, or you are said to have a PCR efficiency of two. 
Then we hit the linear phase and some of the components within the PCR reactions may start to become depleted. And of course, this will, this will happen differentially in different samples. And this can be got to do with many factors. One factor being how much template was available for amplification in each sample. So in the linear phase, the PCR reactions are not necessarily being carry, carried out at the same rate. And it, this is even more pronounced in the plateau phase when many of the PCR components will start to become depleted and eventually the reaction will stop. And it is for this reason that the exponential phase is the most crucial phase in a real-time PCR experiment. So I promised I would tell you more about cycle threshold values and I will. So real-time PCR is focusing on the exponential phase because it provides us with the most precise and accurate data for quantification. Two values are typically calculated. So the threshold line may be calculated in the software, or as I said previously, you can set it yourself. Uh, in addition to this, the PCR cycle at which the sample reaches this level is called the cycle threshold, or CT. And as such, individual PCR reactions become characterized by the CT. And as a rule of thumb, a sample which has a low CT probably has a quite abundant template, where a sample that has a high CT, so the CT occurs very early, excuse me, where the CT occurs very late, probably means that the template is quite scarce. And the CT value is sometimes referred to, referred to as a crossing point or as a quantification cycle CQ. So these terms are often used interchangeably. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, please visit bitesizebio.com slash webinars.